Hello, Phil Man fans, and welcome back to this, another episode of Phil Man's Full Mind, with me, Phil Man, in which I explain stuff that you don't understand. In this episode, I asked you to send your letters in by airmail, and you've crashed 19 planes and ruined air travel for everyone forever. Well done. But one letter did get through, and it's from my friend Peter Parker Spiderman, and uh, he says, What came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, you eight-legged freak, I'm going to answer that in this episode of Phil Man's Full Mind. <gasps> to understand this particular topic, we need to learn a little bit about biology. Biology is one of the five sciences. You've got biology, chemistry, physics, quantum physics, and magic. Now, physics is basically maths, chemistry is basically liquid maths, quantum physics is double maths, and biology is for people that can't do maths, which leaves, of course, magic. Now, magic is cutting a woman in half, or shutting a woman in a box, or shutting a woman in a box and then sticking lots of knives through it, basically anything that looks like it harms women. After all, it wouldn't be considered a science if it wasn't detrimental to women, or was actively hostile towards women. Which is why other large pursuits, such as being a CEO, a firefighter, or an actor, are now considered technically science by how badly they affect women. But back to biology. Biology is where you study how something lives by killing it. Ancient Victorians would put on pith helmets and silly costumes and stupid English accents and go back in time to when before all animals were extinct and kill them and put them in a glass case. Some of the greatest biologists of all, like Snow White, Mao Zedong and Jeremy Bentham, actually killed themselves and studied animals by putting themselves in glass cases when they were dead. Now, the biology of a chicken is a strange one. Inside every chicken there's a weird mouth that makes these mouth noises like this. And eventually it makes the correct noise for an egg to come out. But at this point the egg is fearless and we need to scare the egg to put the chicken inside the egg. This has to be done by picking someone that's very good at picking up on what chickens are afraid of. We ask this guy that lives inside a chicken and scares eggs for a living what exactly he does. Some people prefer the direct approach when yelling at an egg inside a chicken, but I prefer to undermine it in a way. I'll go up to an egg and I'll say, hey, what does a chicken have that's perfectly good for pecking at an egg? A beak. What do all chickens have? A beak. What do you think of that? Where do eggs like to live? In straw. Where do chickens like to peck around the most? In straw. You're going to get pecked by your own mum and that really puts the fear up it. Or another thing I'll do is I'll say, how many positive egg role models do you have in the media? None. You've only got Humpty Dumpty and he fell off a wall and died. Or I'll say, have you ever considered how having egg on your face is considered a bad thing? Eh? What about people? They throw eggs at clowns. Clowns! Once the egg is sufficiently scared, it's passed into the part of the chicken called the mlam. And nobody knows what happens here. And we ask this particular biologist why. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know anything about eggs, but I was elected into egg government uh, and the egg parliament by a bunch of eggs who, uh, yeah, just wanted to send a message to uh, the egg politicians that they weren't being represented. So they elected me and uh, I don't care about eggs at all. I just like money. Mm. However, even these great biologists couldn't answer the question which came first, the chicken or the egg. The main problem being is that back in the day, animals didn't lay eggs, and so if you wanted brunch, you couldn't just go into a cafe and order your eggs benedict or your smashed avocado with poached eggs on top and sourdough bread. Delicious. What you had to do instead was put a ping pong ball on top of a pile of sand, as that's all they had in the prehistoric era, and call that brunch. Many scientists say that before the invention of dippy eggs with soldiers, a lot of soldiers just went spare and went around kicking themselves into all sorts of horrible wars, and then since the invention of eggs, there have been no wars. Except of course for the egg wars, which left thousands of refugees vegan. Yes, verily, before the invention of eggs, animals would produce by dividing themselves down the middle into two identical halves. And then the second one would say, stop copying me. And then the first one would say, stop copying me. And the second one would say, you're still doing it. And the first one would say, you're still doing it. Until their dad would send them to bed without any supper. Well, at least they did in proper textbooks back in the old days. When you got a proper science story when you opened a textbook. Whereas nowadays, you just have 
you know, Isaac Newton slut dropping an apple onto his own head is disgusting. Or you have Einstein as a rapper, MC Squared, rapping about how Bay equals MC Squared and drugs. When, of course, nobody tells the real story about how single-celled organisms evolved into Beanie Babies that were then wiped out by a world-class extinction event caused by a massive Magic the Gathering convention from outer space. Yeah, the dinosaurs were actually cheating because they had too much health and could do too much damage, so we had to get God to nerf them, you know, take them, take them down a peg or two. Uh, and also, I like to get the hand warmers that walkers or, or mountain climbers use, and I like to shape them into a human being shape and cuddle it so I know what it's like to feel a human being next to me. So if anybody out there wants to, you know, put some hand warmers together and hold hands with the hand warmers in a coffee shop, you don't even have to, you know, look at me. You could just kind of be next to me if you want. I, I'd be really into that, thanks. I just also wanted to say I'm, I'm really glad to be, be, be on this show so I can say that any arts career is bad and you should only work in science, technology, engineering or ma 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 mathematics. Uh, and if you do arts, then then you're, you're a loser. Unless, of course, you do art for Magic the Gathering cards. But in which case, you should also learn JavaScript and do art in JavaScript too. Thank you for letting me on the show. Before animals had eggs, they had to make babies by just holding the contents of an egg. You know, all the gooey stuff in their hands. <laughs> they would run around trying to avoid predators and jump over rocks while holding this horrible goo inside their hands. <laughs> It's great, it's hilarious. Very good for slapstick, you know, like predators swooping down out the sky and they're going to carry this, you know, barely formed fetus in their hands. <laughs> it's very funny, very funny. Except, of course, when their children died. Then it's very sad. Another thing that early animals tried was making their offspring out of string. However, even early prehistoric animals agree that puppets are well creepy and they couldn't bring themselves to look after them in case they came back as a haunted dinosaur puppet. Or they would try digging up a dead animal and then rewinding it until it was alive and young again. Unfortunately, blockbusters went out of business in the Precambrian era and as a result they couldn't do this anymore. One animal even tried to create an ontology in which it made a philosophy of how could it be alive if it hadn't had parents and how could it continue its existence without having children and thus in this philosophical framework created a whole evolutionary process for itself. Unfortunately, the book sales weren't very good as it was only very good for a niche audience and it quickly went out of sale the animal came extinct philosophically speaking of course and that's why nobody understands philosophy for the youth of today eventually it was decided that animals should evolve an egg and an egg needed three things a hard outer shell to be compatible with microsoft products and to be an egg several prototypes were designed and it broke down into three main schools of thought one an egg that you pooped out two an egg that stayed inside you and became a child and then you pooped that out. Or three, chocolate eggs, also known as poop eggs. Many religions agree that letting Jesus have all the chocolate eggs was a bad idea. As before, in the dinosaur era, we could have chocolate eggs whenever we wanted. But nowadays, we can only have chocolate eggs when Jesus lets us. And what hatches out of a chocolate egg? Well, it's not a chocolate chicken, that's for sure. In fact, all it is is hollow, which is actually a metaphor for how buying the chocolate makes you feel more hollow, so you buy more chocolate to find, fill that void. But inside the chocolate egg, there's just more of a void. And so the cycle repeats itself. I hope you enjoy your egg, bozo. I mean, which would you rather have, a child or ovoid chocolate? I know, right? It's at this point I'd like to hand over to my special guest and an expert on this topic, Arfie. Let's see what he's got to say. In Roman times, these canals here in Birmingham were used for trade. This was back in the first century before Christ, and they would trade in all manner of items, pottery, knives, poultry. And it's really the poultry trade that took off most. There's trade in chickens, 
and trade in eggs. We would often be trading chickens for eggs or eggs for chickens. It's not clear which part of the trade was more successful nor which was established before the other. In many ways both parts were understood together. It was a general poultry trade rather than a chicken trade per se or an egg trade. And so we're left with the egg, a terrifyingly blank obelisk, a monument to the fragility of life and the horrors that lurk within. Now, when people hear the question, what came first, the chicken or the egg, they imagine this parade of horrors, an egg giving birth to a chicken, a chicken giving birth to an egg from that, and then something else births out, and it's probably a chicken or an egg, we don't know, but it's horrific. So where do chickens come from? Well, we know that chickens are made up of 40 constituent nuggets. And each one of these nuggets comes in five different shapes. You've got the boot, the hat, the Scotty dog, the racing car, and the Arc de Triomphe. Now, these nuggets can be arranged in any order to create a chicken. Then they're tarred and feathered, and the feet and beaks are added later on. Now, if you remove any one of these nuggets, the chicken will fall apart into its constituents' nuggets, and you've got yourself a delicious meal. Chickens nowadays are mostly bred for food or to be used in a horrific game of chicken ball, or to be made into a large herd, driven over your enemy and make them too warm to sleep at night until they surrender all their farm holdings to you. Nature has not been kind to chickens. It's made them flightless birds, it's made them easy prey for foxes or chainsaws, and nature will often blow some leaves in the air and let them hang in the air just for a moment before blowing away before anyone notices that spell out the word dweeb just where chickens can see it. Chickens evolved from penguins, the original flightless bird, when an evil bad guy with a big twiddly moustache planted one of those spherical bombs with a fuse hanging out of it inside a penguin and it blew up, making it more spherical, and thus it became a chicken. However, after an unfortunate but comical stretching incident, this chicken then became an emu, which is not a real bird. It doesn't even have a real name. I mean, emu. What kind of name is that? Check out this guy that can't pronounce the word emu. Emu, 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 Answering the question which came first, the chicken or the egg, is vitally important to humans because it will help us answer a lot of other questions about ourselves, such as which came first, the dinosaurs or robots? Which came first, dancing or the moon? Which came first, 1946 or 1945? We just don't know! Many people say that factory farming chickens is bad, but I would only say it's a bad thing if you think that locking a tiny dumb animal in a box for the rest of its life before brutally slaughtering it in exchange for dipping its flesh into boiling hot oil and eating it sounds like the kind of thing that a bad guy would do, which of course it isn't. I want to say that if a chicken voluntarily goes into a factory farm, then it wants to be eaten. There's nothing stopping these chickens from taking up some other kind of career and not being eaten. Same deal for an egg. If an egg chooses to be born into a factory farm, it's fair game. Both to be eaten as an egg, or if that egg chooses to give birth to a chicken, that then chooses to give birth to an egg, and so on and so forth, which is sick. That means we can eat the chicken and the egg. And that's why I side with the witch in Hansel and Gretel. Because if you expect me not to eat children, then you're wrong, Buster. I will eat a child. They're delicious. I don't want liberals coming around here telling me to be vegan when I can eat a delicious child, as is my right to do so. I will eat a child. 
You think you can stop me putting a child into my mouth and eating it? Because it's delicious? Just because of some stupid thing called the sanctity of life? Well, you've got another thing coming. Watch out. I'm gonna eat your kids. Now, technically, vegans can legally eat a chicken, so long as they do it dressed as a fox or a chainsaw and do it in the middle of the night. Many people tell me that a chicken must have come first, because if an egg came first, chickens would have eaten all the eggs and couldn't give birth to any more chickens, because nobody can refuse an omelette. But think about it, have you ever refused an omelette? I certainly haven't, and that means no one has, because it is impossible to refuse an omelette. And here's why. First of all, an omelette is zero calories. Secondly, an omelette is folded, which means it's half the calories, and you can't divide zero by half, that's impossible, which is why it's impossible to refuse an omelette. And that's science. And that unites all the sciences. You've got the chemistry of the egg, you've got the physics of the folded egg, you've got the impossible physics of folding a zero egg, which is, you know, quantum physics, you've got the magic of an omelette, and you've got biology, which is the mouth that you use to eat it. And that's, that's of course, you've got a robot mouth. And so, to finally solve the question of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, I had a look in my freezer, and there's a chicken in there that's been in there for several years. However, when I looked in my fridge, the eggs had already gone off, and this proves definitively that the chicken came before the egg. Now, many scientists will say that oviparous species evolved hundreds of millions of years before the modern-day chicken, and thus eggs were around before the modern-day chicken actually evolved. But they're wrong, and I've proved them wrong with my scientific experiments, which is how science works. Well, Batman, I hope that's answered the question for you. If you've got another question, pop it in the comments and I'll see if I can answer it in a future edition of Phil Man's Full Mind, in which I explain stuff that you don't understand. If you've enjoyed the show, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you've enjoyed it more than that, you can send me a dollar on Patreon with the link in the description to help me make more shows like this. Thank you, Phil Man fans. And before we go, we've got time for one more question, which is, why did the chicken cross the road? Ah, oh, God, chickens! Hate them. Why? Oh, it's the obsession with chicken. Okay, guys, thanks. Uh, I'll see you on the flip. <gasps>